Hello, it's Emma Jo here from Lavinia Stamps and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to do Lavinia Tours number six, part one. And for this one we have called it a Hootenanny. So a Hootenanny is not something that only comes out at New Year but from what I can, I've discovered, it is a meeting of people having a bit of a party with some folk music and fun. So we'll go with that. It's probably not exactly that, but it's as close as we're going to get today. So, enough chat from me. Come with me and let me show you what we're going to be up to today. So we've got four delicious backgrounds using dinkles and look at the textures you get with them. They're absolutely stunning and those colours are super bright and vibrant. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make some superb backgrounds using dinkles and needle tip bottles. Might be a little bit of elements along the way too. But we get some fab effects and it's all about creating an atmosphere without necessarily having to do all that work of detail. You know, you can create, in this case, the idea of a forest without there being too many leaves and too many trees. Well, you'll see what I mean in a minute. Anyway, come with me and let me show you how it's done. Right, so background number one, please. Here we go. A4 multifarious card and some dinkles, yellow dinkles, with mica minerals metallic bronze and a mop brush, series one. And we're just, I just put a squiggle in the middle and now I'm using my mop brush to gently persuade it out towards the edges. But obviously I seem to be leaving a lot of the colour in the centre. Now again in a needle tip bottle, I've put some dinkles pine green and I'm just dotting it round the edges. And while it's still wet, it goes for a wander all on its own and it's fabulous. So we get the heat tool out and just start to dry off some of that colour. And in doing that, we sort of fix it in place. This is Dinkle's Blue Dragon. I'm just adding touches of it here, there and everywhere around that pine green. And just adding a few more dots. So pick up your mop brush. And once you've dried a little bit of it in place, we just start moving it around with some of our water and creating this extra textured edge around the outside of what we already had. And flick it, flick the bits that are on your brush into the center because it, none of it gets wasted. And we're just going to dry each stage off. We're layering this color on top of each other. And the effects are just delicious. So using a piece of kitchen paper or paper towel, just lift off any excess fluid that you don't want and you'll get another lovely texture because you're lifting off colour. And as you move it around, you might move colour somewhere else and that's fine too. So that's rather lovely. I'm just gonna dry the other side of the paper to make sure that any wrinkles are sort of evened out. Background number two, please. So again, A4 multifarious card, needle tip bottle that's filled with Dinkle Sea Blue and a mop brush. And I am literally just using that mop brush to move things around. This lovely soft brush that does just move things around without leaving any bristles or, you know, it's just lovely. And this is Dinkle's Blue Dragon. So I've, I've heated that up a bit, dried it off, and I've added some extra dots of Dinkle's Blue Dragon. And there's some pine green going on as well. There's something quite organic about this. They sort of evolve as you go along. So no two pieces will ever look the same. 
And that, my friends, is Dinkle's Burgundy. And what am I going to do now? Aha! Splats of water from my mop brush, because it's, it's collected a lot of water and holds a lot, so you can splat quite a nice amount onto the paper and just move your colours into each other. and dry some of that fluid and you can see the way the way the water falls I mean really the water is what um, directs your colour so you never really know what the water is going to do because it has a mind of its own this is the ranger heat tool and I'm just drying off some of that fluid and we create pockets of colour and, and where the water's walked, you can see down the bottom right hand side that you've got like this lovely line. All of these are wonderful textures and I'm blotting off some of that excess fluid now. Look at that. So now I've got my Elements Ink Truffle with a size 9 stencil brush. And I'm going around the outside, you know those white edges? And just by adding colour to those edges, it changes the look of the whole piece again. So I'm not stressing about, you know, beautiful blending because this isn't that sort of thing. I don't mind the occasional blots of darker colour because that will all make sense in the end. Honestly, it will. <laughs> Right, so that's that one. Our next colour is going to be the Elements Ink Olive. Again with a, a size 9 stencil brush. And I'm just going inside the truffle and over some of that lovely dinkles work that we've just done. And to make sure that your brush is completely covered, just pop your um, stencil brush into the top, into the lid, move it around a bit and it does sort of help it to create this lovely blended look. There we go. I'm liking it already. They just take on a life of their own, don't they? What's lovely about working with dinkles like this is that, you know, there is no right or wrong. You're going to create something that is textured in some way. Just keep your water moving, keep creating paths and keep blotting the colour off. And if you don't like it, you just keep building the colour up until you do. And eventually you'll find something that you like the look of. So you can see the more the olive I put on, the more it sort of creates this depth to the piece. Aha, Dinkles, yellow. I love this. I've popped some Mica Minerals, the metallic bronze in this, given it a good shake. And look, that yellow lifts up the colour beneath and it gives this sort of almost like fairy lights, you know, like those, there are little sprites in within that textured background, little tiny lights hidden in perhaps the undergrowth or whatever this could be. Or the trees, let's go with trees. Hmm, let's add it to the journal. 
So open up your next page. I'm using a Lavinia journal and it's the smooth variety. You can see that an A4 page is too large really for what we're doing, but that doesn't matter anyway because, yep, you guessed it, I'm going to rip it. Now, the idea for this is that I'm creating a passage through something. So I don't really want all of that page covered anyway. I want a gap in the centre, which is why I've ripped it in two. I'm ripping this. Just think of ripping a wiggly line. And I love doing those because it usually means no one will know if you've mucked it up. If you do a straight line, I always think, it, you know, you're setting yourself up for a bit of a fail there. <laughs> I certainly can't rip in a straight line. There we go. So that's my centre. My uncovered centre. Just line it up, fold over when it gets to the edge so that you can cut it to size. Now you can see I'm bending it at the bottom there. I'm bending it there. And knocking the camera as well, which is quite a feat really. And cutting that to size. Next step is bibbity bobbity glue. And I'm just, this nozzle is great for getting the glue where you want it to go. And then I just use my finger, or nature's spatula as we call it, to just give it a, a more thorough covering. Turn it over, glue it down. Now this will overhang at the bottom, but we will sort that out afterwards. Again, boobity bobbity glue. Smooth that out a bit so that everywhere's got some something to stick it with. Good, good. Mm, there we go. We want a little bit more space than that, Emma Jo. Come on. That's it. Fabulous. Okay. So make sure that it's flush on the inside and we're just going to cut and trim it to size. And look at that. Aha! So that was the background we did at the beginning. And I'm just ripping this too around the coloured edges. So you can see no straight line is in sight. <laughs> There's a lot of wiggly lines going on. Take this slowly. If you're thinking, oh, I don't like ripping, fine. Use a guillotine, do a straight line, that's fine. But if you're having a go at doing the ripping, just remember that you're ripping only really three sides of it and you want it to be as close to the A4 size as possible, but with a bit of a wiggle in it. There we go. Can you see? Might even still be a bit large for that page, but get it as close as you can. Now off camera. There we go. Thank you. That was much better. I've folded it. Now I've got a metal ruler, which I find very handy. And I'm just bending my page to fit. And just folding it over. And then I'm bending that over towards the, uh, the underside because that is basically going to be the flap that I will glue. There we go. So it'll open like that. So the yellow is going to be on the underside, yeah? So it's the plain bit that we'll be showing. Background number three, please. So we've already got one side. 
So let's just finish that off. That white bit there, I don't like it. So we're just going to give it a bit of colour. So hopefully it might blend in a bit more. Don't get me wrong, we'll do a lot of work on it, but let's just give it a, a head start. And just dry that colour off. Next thing you do is turn it over, making sure that you've got a clean mat because you don't want to muck up anything you've already done. And we're just using our dinkles again. And that was Blue Dragon. This is Burgundy. And I think that's Pine. Nope, that's Burgundy. So we've got Dinkles Sea Blue. I see. Dinkles Burgundy. There's a bit of Blue Dragon in there as well, I think. Super. And look how the flap has been painted as well. Or the lip. There we go. Adding some more. See, I, I dried that off first. And this helps us build those layers up. So that they're um, strong in their own way. And they don't mix into mud. Yeah. So this is Dinkle Sea Blue, Pine Green. And... And... That was Lime Divine. And just let the water do the work, yeah? So pick things up. Use your mop brush to create a texture. All you're doing is picking that mop brush up and dabbing it. There's no special skill. It's just pick it up and move it around a bit. But in short dabs. And dry it off. And look at that already for another layer. Doesn't that look cracking? So I've got my kitchen, trusty kitchen paper and I'm taking some of the extra fluid off. And using some Dinkles yellow with Mica Minerals metallic bronze and dotting that about a bit and what I love about this is if you leave it on there for a little while dry it into position and then lift it off look at that it's amazing and when you see this yourself and you're doing this and you can see the sparkles as well you will just be so happy so that's side one and the other side was side two so that side too is the one that's going to be face up. So you can see how it sort of works with the one on the left hand side. Yeah. Super. Right, I'm showing you this for a reason. That is my brush water and it's a sort of greeny colour. And I love using brush water because it tends to have just a little subtle hint of colour. So you're automatically not starting from nothing. Not starting from nothing. Anyway, so this is Dinkle's Pine Green. Again, in my needle tip bottles, they give you so much control over your colour. It's just changed the way I work. This is Lime Divine. Lime Divine. And Blue Dragon. Now, these are just the colours I'm using, but, you know, please feel free if you want to use sea blue or you want to use sepia. This is amber that's just gone on there. Just use whichever colours you fancy. Or you have. <laughs> so that's my first layer. Drying that off. And because it was on a wet background, look how it's just gone spreading out just like a watercolour would. It's lovely. The angle of this video makes it look like I'm actually drying it very, very close to the paper. I promise you, I'm not. <laughs> so lifting off any excess fluid there that you don't want there with your paper towel. Okay, and once you've got it to the point that you're happy and you can stop drying... 
then we can move on. Don't forget to dry the other side. Super. Right, what are we up to? So this is more, another layer. So there's your Dinkles Pine Green. Just dot it about the place. And now smush it with your <laughs> smush with your mop brush. And you can see that in doing that, you've built up another layer on top of that first layer of colour. This is your sepia, again going around the outside, it's sort of mimicking what we did with the elements and the truffle and the olive. And that was the blue dragon. But look at those colours. They're gorgeous. But can you see how the layers have built up? And there goes that yellow. And we're smushing it. But look at how vibrant that yellow is. And you can take some of that yellow when you're taking the excess away. You move it around a bit and you create this completely different. Sort of um, like a light is reflecting off something. So I've just added more yellow here, there and everywhere. Because these little dots, I think they just look magical. Look. They're like little orbs of light. Stunners they are. Little stunners. Into the journal. So that's that page we did. And there's that other page we did. <laughs> and we're just gluing them together now. So get your bibbidi bobbidi glue. And at the edge of that page... Put your bippity boppity glue, smooth it about a bit so it's all got some glue on it. Yeah, fabulous. And just glue it to your page. Now you can see that there is an overlap that can be trimmed. Yeah, with a pair of scissors, go to the other side and you can trim it. And you did it! Well done! Look at those stunning backgrounds. I bet you're pleased. I hope you are. Wow, they look fab. You did it. Well done. Well, that turned out rather well. I was rather pleased with that. <laughs> Don't know about you. It's great how texture can just um, give you that atmospheric feel to a piece, whether it's happy, sad, forest, uh, sand. You know, you can you don't have to do all that detail. Super duper. So um, next week we will be putting the characters into place. I say next week in the next video, um, we'll be putting the characters into place and we will be adding the text so we can see what the story is going, how the story evolves. And uh, that'll be great fun. So in the meantime, I want to say thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you've had fun. And if there's any questions <coughs> that you would like to ask, sorry, clearing my throat, any questions that you would like to ask, um, please just pop them in the comments below and I will do my best to get back in touch with you as soon as I can. But in the meantime, you know, you take care, have fun and happy crafting. See you soon. Bye.